Hey everybody, I'm officially a private pilot now. I uh, took my exam a couple weeks ago and I passed both the oral and the practical. And so I wanted to jump on here and do a quick video on uh, the things that I studied, uh, how I studied, and my overall experience with the, with the check ride. Um, so I'm gonna jump right into it. I, the, the, the books that I used for studying for the check ride were primarily the, the Private Pilot Jepson book. I think this is a great book. Um, I've used it a lot in my whole um, uh, time that I've been uh, uh, studying for the Private Pilot. I also used a FAR AIM. Uh, so this is like the Bible for, uh, for pilots. So if you don't have a FAR AIM, you have to get one. I bought the 2019 and then I ordered the Gleam kit and I have the 2019 Far Aim and I also have the Far Aim 2020 and I also ordered the one for the iPad which is the electronic version. I think on that one as they get updated they give you the newer version. I, I have So I have 2019, 2020 and 2021. 2021 is electronic. Um, so yeah, overall the experience was great. Um, I met with my CFI uh, a couple weeks beforehand and, and practiced uh, some of the questions that I knew they were going to ask. Uh, I met some of the people, uh, some of the other pilots that had taken the, uh, the exam with the same DPE. So they gave you pointers, they gave me pointers on what they were going to ask, how they were going to ask. Uh, the questions and they prepared me um, for the actual check ride. Um, went over to Greenville. I, I took my exam on Greenville. The DEPE is over there. He has a hangar, has a whole bunch of planes. So I went there, we flew there. Um, the oral took about two and a half, three hours. Uh, I've heard stories that for people, it can take upwards of four or five hours. So thank God mine was not that long, but I think what helped me in preparing for that uh, or part of that check ride was my preparedness, right? I put together this binder and it really helped me uh, show the DEPE that I was prepared, that I was organized and that I knew the material well. And so he didn't go four or five hours into the exam. He asked me a lot of questions with some that I knew, some that I didn't know, some that I had to look up some that he actual, actually told me or, or, or gave me pointers on how to reference that in, in, the, in the material that I had. So overall, the experience for the oral was not as bad as I thought. I thought it was gonna be six hours, they were gonna nail me and grill me and on a lot of questions, but it actually wasn't like that. It was very straightforward. It was more of a uh, talking uh, with another pilot, if you will. Um, they start asking you specific questions with different, in different areas. And so it's a good flow from section to section. Um, and it was things like, you know, uh, clouds, airplane, uh, you, you know, your experience and in, 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 in reading the charts and things like that. So I wanna uh, tell you a little bit about some of the things that I did to prepare. Uh, for the FAR AIM, I actually tapped out the sections that I thought were gonna be important. There's a, there's a company, a flight school out of Florida that sells these taps. I think they're about $5. They sell you the FAR AIM for, uh, I don't know, $20, $30 with the tabs included and the highlighted version. And they also sell you just the tab for a couple of dollars. I only bought the tabs because I had the FAR AIM already. Um, and one of the ones that I do remember uh, specifically that comes out of here is where do the A tomato flames uh, acronyms come from or where does that come from? I said it comes from the FAA. What the DEP was expecting me to say was it's 91205 91 from the FAR AIM. So make sure you know your sections in the FAR AIM. Make sure you understand uh, what uh, the sections are and what they cover because you are going to reference the, uh, this book uh, in the in the exam. I know it, I know I did uh, a couple times and I know you will as well. Um, far aim very important is the Bible and you're going to reference that uh, in your exam. So I'm going to go into a, briefly on my. Um, cross-country planning and then I'm going to cover a little bit about the binder and what I have in here. Um, so I, I said you have to have the far aim. One of the other things that you need to have 
is your charts. You're gonna need to have your, your maps. Even if you have four flight, I know uh, a lot of us use four flight. Even if you have four flight, you, the DEPE is gonna expect you to have maps. And the reason for the maps is because the map have a lot of information that you can find on four flight, but you also need to know how to read the maps in case you don't have four flight, in case your iPad dies. For a number of reasons, you have to have the maps. And so I bought uh, the maps for Dallas. I'm here in Dallas and I bought the maps for Oklahoma. I bought that a couple weeks beforehand and I drew out the course of my flight. I went from Greenville to Oklahoma City. Um, I put together the, um, the cross country flight two or three days beforehand. So the, um, the, I knew the, the route that I was gonna take and I knew that if I had to do it again, my, the only thing that would change would, were gonna be my, my time slightly a little bit because of the winds and definitely the winds. So um, I picked the, the altitude, I picked the points um, and I did that ahead of time and I did that two or three times so that I could know how to, how to get the cross country planning beforehand. Um, when you do your cross country planning, when you're looking for points, look for points that are uh, on railroads and roads because it gives you two lines that you can actually visually see on the ground when you're flying and you can reference that. Uh, on some of mine, I picked the city. Uh, those are good, but they want you to pick things that you can look on the bottom and not say Celeste, the city of Celeste. That's not good enough. You need to be able to pick railroads and, and roads that um, connect or cross so that you can actually specifically find that precise point. If you're flying over the city of Celeste, that doesn't give you a precise point, even if it's a small city. So that's the number one um, thing that I wanna say about the cross country planning. The other thing that I will say about the cross country planning is make sure you have your weight and balances done before you take off and when you land. That way you know what your fuel requirements are, you know what your weight is gonna be when you take off and when you land. One of the questions that I had was, uh, if you have passengers in the back and your, uh, your CG is an FCG, uh, what do you do to compensate? And the answer that the DEPE was expecting was you will trim your nose down. Uh, and so make sure you do your cross country planning, make sure you understand your weight and balances. They're gonna ask you questions with regards to forward CG and backward CG, FCG. In my case, it was the FCG. I said I would push the nose down on takeoff, but he was expecting me to say I would trim the nose down on takeoff. And so those are the kinds of things that I'm gonna say about the cross country. Uh, you will not fly the full flight for the cross country. In my case, I did the first two uh, points and then we deviated off and, and, and did the maneuvers, but you will be expected to know your routes and you will be expected to put the whole thing together. Make sure you use BORs when possible. I use the Bonham VOR and then I use the, the uh, railroads like I mentioned. And then I, and then I did some cities. Uh, the cities were okay, but he, he said don't use the cities. Um, so those are the two things. Calculate your, your fuel because he will ask you questions about your fuel. How, what is your fuel when you land? Uh, that was one of the questions for me. Um, and so, you know, highlight the, uh, the route that you're gonna fly and put timings in your points because he's got at least the first two or three points because you're gonna, you're gonna be expected to, uh, to do that. Make sure you start your timer uh, when you take off on that cross country flight because he's gonna wanna see your times as you, as you fly. So, I'll probably do a, another video on just the, the practical part of the flying. I, I don't think I wanna do that on this one, but I just wanted to say those kinds of things uh, about the, the flying. I'm gonna go back now to the, to the binder and then I'm gonna talk a little bit about some of the, the, uh, the aids that I did, the study aids that I did to, to study for the, for the check ride. So I put together some, some three by five cards that you know, had notes on things that I knew I wanted to remember. Um, so, for example, 
you know, my, my airspeed limitations, your white arc, your yellow arc, those are going to be important and those are going to be things that they ask you um, on the, on the, um, on the check ride, right? Airspeed indicator markings. You have to ignore the window. My, my window thing is broken. It's making a whole bunch of noises. Hopefully I can edit that uh, on post. Um, so a lot of airspeed indicators. I, I also did the airspeed emergency operation maneuvers. Um, you can see the weight. This is for the Cirrus. So if you have a different aircraft, you know, you're going to have to have um, your, your weight according, right? So I did, I did a lot of the emergency on the 3 by 5 by 5 because I knew that those things are going to be uh, things that they're going to ask you about. Your engine failure, you know, that should come, you, that should come from memory, right? And so I did that, I did this so I can study and, and remember what I wanted to do. Uh, engine, engine, engine failure, um, this is in flight. Now, the other one was for take, uh, take off. Wing fire. They will definitely ask you uh, engine fire and wing fire on your practical. So make sure you know, um, this is the engine fire. So make sure you know what your engine fire uh, procedure is gonna be. Um, and then the other thing too is for, you're gonna have, you're likely gonna have an emergency. Uh, as a on the practical right he's gonna say engine fire you have an emergency landing and so make sure you know your best glides and your speeds um, those are going to be part of your practical um, cabin fire what what do you do if you have a cabin fire right and so these are the things that I did to my air speeds to study and remember the numbers because the numbers are important uh, for both the oral part because he's going to ask you questions about it but more importantly for your practical part um, the oral part they're going to ask you questions about weather they're going to ask you questions about the airplane they're going to have a uh, you know hypothetical situation if you pick your uh, mother-in-law and she has a whole bunch of cats and and things like this and um, but your baggage is, is heavy they're gonna have hypothetical situation and, and it's gonna require you to think on your feet so it's not a you know um, you know straightforward you know looking at the book and coming up with an answer it's gonna be a hypothetical situation you know you're gonna to have to deviate and get fuel if you if you can't you know if, if your weight is too high so those are the kinds of things that you're gonna be asked about on your uh, oral and also uh, yeah mainly on the oral they're not gonna ask you that on the practical the practical is mainly flying so I want to cover what I have on my binder because I found it very useful and also my DEPE said that this was a useful binder that people uh, would pay for this. So I want to give you the information that I put in here. Obviously every, uh, every person is going to have a different experience in, in their um, check ride but I'm going to tell you what I put in here. So the first section that I have is the driver's license, pilot information and medical. So the first couple of questions that they're going to ask you on your oral part is going to be with regards to airworthiness of the airplane. And then the second one is your eligibility to become a pilot. You have to have your driver's license. You have to have a government issue ID and you have to have your uh, medical certificate. So when I walked in, the first thing he asked me was, you know, let me see your driver's license. Let me see your your student a certificate and ask me for the medical. Um, so I made sure that I had that information collected and organized on the binder on the first tab because I knew they were going to ask me for it. And I think you should put something like that together. The second tab that I put together uh, is with regards to my uh, minimums uh, when flying. So as you become a pilot, you will have certain minimums yourself that you will have to um, no, you know, what is your visibility? What are your ceilings? Um, you, what is your crosswinds? Things like that, that will allow you to stay safe. 
right? He didn't ask me about my minim my personal minimums, but I thought it was a good idea to have this because he could have asked me and I didn't want to have something that says, okay, I'm going to say this or say that. I wanted to have that documented. So what I did was I went to the AOPA website and they have a form uh, that has uh, BFR pilot personal minimums, you know, and so I downloaded it, I printed it out, and I put my minimums. This form covers things like, you know, your weather minimums, your airport visibility, your airport width, uh, your pilot hours, your aircraft. And so let me show you what this looks like. Um, so make sure you, you document what your personal minimums are. There's one for BFR, and then there's one for IFR. Um, if you have that um, documented and written out, you can always reference that, and they can change. You know, when you first start out, your one way uh, may be long and wide, uh, and as you become uh, more of an expert flying, then you can change those minimum. But definitely write them down. They will, they will ask you. Uh, or they may not, but if they do ask you, you can reference that material, right? So that's my chapter number two. Chapter number three, or section number three for the binder is um, when I, so I started flying on the 172 and then moved to the Piper, and then after the Piper went into the Cirrus, Cirrus SR20. I did my solo on the Piper, and then I did a solo on the Cirrus. And when I, before I did the solo on the series, I had to take a pre-solo quiz, which is from series. It's a workbook that they give you or the, my CFI gave me. And so I did that uh, uh, workbook, that pre-solo quiz. And that pre-solo quiz asks you uh, questions with regards to weight, uh, with regards to a number of things. I put that in here because I found that information to be very valuable for me in studying for both my oral and for my practical. And so that's my uh, chapter number three. Chapter number four, I had some questions with regards to basic med that I wasn't too clear on. So I knew that he could likely ask me you know, questions with regards to basic med. And so my section number four is basic med and medical certificate, you know. I have a third class medical certificate and they, they will ask you questions about that, no doubt. Uh, make sure you know that because the, they will ask you with regards to your certificate, your medical certificate. Chapter number five for me was acronyms and mnemonics. Uh, and those are gonna be your Atomato Flames, your AV8. Those kinds of things are gonna be there. Um, I went out to Google and search for um, Search for things that are out there. You know your your uh, a tomato flames, your a, your flaps, your um, you know um, pre-flight information, things that are acronyms. You know that people know. Um, I wanted to just have some some reference material that I could use. Uh, I went out to Google and found something out there. I, I think I did uh, acronyms, uh, private pilot, and those things came up, and I printed them out. Number six for me is chart supplements. Um, so, I'm gonna, you know, I, I have the front section of the um, of the of the chart of the of the map of the map. I printed that out so I can reference it. I don't want to be opening and closing that uh, chart when I'm with the instructor. And so, if he asked me, you know, um, there, you know, if we're flying over and we see a rocket, what does that mean, right? So. I, the, those are the kinds of things that I, I didn't want to, um, you know, have to open the map multiple times. I, I wanted to, I printed it out and then I looked at it, you know, when I was looking at the charts, chart supplements, you know. So that's what I have uh, for section six. For section seven, I did air spaces, you know. And so this is, you know, basically the air spaces stuff. Um, I, you know, I know my airspaces, but I knew that there were, could be some questions with regards to, you know, the, the airspaces and the altitude and things like that. Um, luckily, the questions that he asked me, I, I uh, uh, you know, I knew them right away, so he didn't 
you know, uh, drill me on a lot of the airspaces, but they will ask you about airspaces. And if you're not comfortable knowing all your airspaces, uh, you have to have some sort of material that you can reference and reference quickly. And I didn't want to go back to the far aim to, to do that. So I, you know, I printed something that, was, that came out from the, from some of the books, the Jepson and things like that, that I, that could easily reference. Uh, number eight for me was weight and balance. They're definitely going to ask you about your weight and balance. They're going to ask you your top, uh, your maximum weight, your minimum weight, your uh, forward CG, your aft CG, um, and they're going to do a hypothetical on those. So number eight for me is weight and balance, and I printed a couple forms that allow me to do a weight and balance in front of the DEPE in case he asked me. I did a, a weight and balance before takeoff, and I did a weight and balance when I landed, uh, on my cross country planning, so I knew what my weight and balance was going to be throughout the, the whole process. And I was prepared in case he asked me to do a weight and balance there. I had enough um, printed material that I could just fill that out and, um, and quickly put one together. He didn't, but, but, I, but he did ask me a hypothetical on having rear passengers, so expect some of those questions. Uh, number nine. On the series, there's a couple things that you have to do uh, when you're briefing your passenger, like the caps, your fire extinguisher, the hammer underneath the your egress hammer underneath the, the console. So I printed out um, a passenger briefing sheet. I got this from the series website, and so you know I put that together and I memorized that um, so that I can brief my passengers now that i have my certificate um, the one thing that i'm going to be able to do is i can take passengers right and so when you take passengers you have to brief them uh with you and the instructor the dpe is going to expect you to know these briefings so i put that in my in my binder i think it will be helpful if you put your binder together to have something like that um number 10 for me was proc charts and legend um basically you know the legend that you know what the park charts are going to be, right? What's rain, what's a low front, what's a cold front. Um, I got this also from the, from the, uh, from the, from Google, from the web, from the internet. And then I'm going to show you another one that I have in here. This is the NOAA uh, weather data imagery legends. I got, this one I got from NOAA. Right. And so it just, helps you to know uh, or have information in case you have to reference it. I ended up not referencing the material, but it's good enough that I didn't have to reference it because I, I have it in here. And if, if I had to look for it, I have it all organized. And, and he was, the DEPE was very impressed with the organization of the binder. Um, number 11 for me was fog types. They're gonna ask you about the different kinds of fog types here in Texas. Also, if you're in California or Florida, they're gonna ask you about different kinds of fogs. Uh, number 12 for me was medication. You know, if you're taking medication, you know, your timing, how, how much time do you have to let it pass before you can go flying and be safe? They're gonna ask you about timing with regards to diving. If you go out and you start diving, you can't just jump on a plane right away, right? You have to have, in my case, it was 24 hours. Um, there's some people that'll say 12 hours, I wanted to be say, safe and said, I said uh, 24 hours. I would also put something on your, on your personal minimums. Like if I go, you know, I used to be a, a, a dive, dive cert, you know, was certified to, to go diving and I, I would go dive in, in the Florida Keys. I don't do anymore, but if I go to the Florida Keys and I dive, I want to wait 24 hours. And I would put that, I put that on my personal minimums that I would wait. 24 to 48 hours if I if I uh, went diving, but I put some information that I can reference uh, if the DEPE asked me, um, you know, any information with regards to that. Um, the number 14 is your METAR and TAF code. You know, I, I just put reference material that I can that I can use for METAR and TAF codes. Um, and then I the number 14, number 15 for me was icing and thunderstorms. Uh, my weakest part was the weather. You know, there's some people that go out there and they ace the written um, exam and they get a hundred. For me, 
I got a high 70, low 80. And so my weakest part was the weather. And so I needed to have enough information here that I can reference should, the, should he ask me a lot about uh, the weather. And he did, he asked me about ceilings and thunderstorms and things like that. And I opened the binder a couple of times, but I didn't, it wasn't like I was using the binder extensively. The binder for him was, showed that I was organized and I was prepared and ready to take the exam. And, and so I wanted to give you my tips on, on the binder. The one last thing that I put in here was an advisory circular, circular in AD, right, for the, for the Cirrus. Because I knew that there, there's gonna be a question about AD. They're gonna ask you about that. They're gonna to wanna to know where do you get it, who does it, and things like that. So I showed him the AD that I printed, and I said, this is where I got it from, and it facilitated and it sped up that part because he knew, you know, he, he actually saw something printed. That was the one thing that I pulled out of the binder, I gave it to him, and um, yeah, and that really helped in that part. One of the things that I don't have here that I, in hindsight I think I should have put in here was the oxygen, right? Medication, diving, oxygen. Those three sections I think will come, uh, will go very well together. So if I was to redo this, I think the next part that I would add is, um, you know, your, your, um, your oxygen. When, when do passengers need oxygen? When do you need oxygen? And for how long? And, and so that, I didn't have that in here, but I think I would put that going on my next, um, when I do my IFR. I also got this little thing from Amazon. Uh, I don't know where I bought it. I don't know who the vendor is, but it, I think it's like a pilot reference sheet sheet. Uh, and this thing was very handy when I uh, took the exam. So if you go out, I, I'll try to find a link and I'll uh, put that on the on the video. I'm not endorsing it. Uh, I don't have any anything from these people, but I'm, I'm just saying I use this um, when I took my exam and it really helped me, so it could help you. Um, overall, my experience was, was um, you know, there, there's definitely some, quest some questions that I didn't know. Um, there's, there's things that I, sh I could have done better. Um, it was a learning experience for me taking the exam. I was more nervous than anything else because people overhyped what the check ride's all about, but um, I'm glad I passed it and I passed it on the first try. Um, what I, I think what we did uh, that worked well for me was the oral was the first part of the day and then we were gonna do the, the practical on the second part. He had, there was wind, it was high winds on that day, I think it was gusting to 22, 24, and he asked me if I wanted to go do the practical I looked at him and I looked at my minimum and says, you know, this, these are uh, above my personal minimums. If we can discontinue and do it another day, I'd rather do that. And so we did that and that helped a lot. Having the oral on one day and the practical on another day helped significantly because you're not stressed, you're not tired, you're not worried, you know, on the, uh, for the practical part, you know, after you've completed your oral. So I was fresh when I did my practical. And I flew really well, I didn't mess up any other maneuvers, and I hit it right on the, on the first try, right? So I would recommend if you could to have your oral and your practical on different days. In most cases, you're gonna do the, the whole thing in one day. Uh, and I've heard stories where they take three, four, five hours on your oral and then expect you to fly for an hour and a half, maybe two hours to do your practical. I think that's kind of insane, you know. I was fortunate enough that we had some high uh, crosswinds and the DEPE asked me if I wanted to uh, discontinue and do it in another day and I said, sure, I'd take that any day, you know. And so overall, my experience was well. Uh, the binder, highly recommend that. Get the books that you need. Uh, you remember that the check ride is your ticket to continue to learn. So it doesn't just stop when you get the check when you get the check ride. Yeah, you get the certificate, but you're always going to have to open the far aim. You're always going to be expected to uh, continue to learn. And so the DEPE knows that and make sure you know uh, a good portion of the questions otherwise you will not pass. I knew uh, a lot of the questions that he asked, but I also felt that I didn't know two or three questions that he asked me uh, and, and things that I could have answered uh, better. I think my 
concern was I was nervous, you know, and so uh, the day before, make sure you get a good, nice sleep, make sure you rest it. Don't open the book the day be the day off. Just, you know, put it aside. You've already studied enough and go take the exam. Be calm, collect it, and know your material. And I think that's gonna, that's what I did to, to help me. Um, I'm gonna do another video talking about the practical, but the practical, uh, I felt, you know, given the hours that I have flying, that I could handle the flying. Um, and I did, I did, I did really well in the flying. Um, was very happy with the, with my instructors, with my, my CFI. I have two CFI, Anise and Romel, and they prepared me a couple weeks before the, um, the exam. Obviously they were really looking forward to me passing on the first try and I did. And so they spent a lot of time with me, preparing me for the, for the, for the check ride. They did a great job. The, you know, the, the two weeks leading up to the check ride, we spent two hours on Zoom meetings just going over um, the questions that I could have asked. I also got a, the blue book with the, with all the questions, but I glanced through it. I, you know, read part of it, but it, you know, that book should be like an audio book. Uh, I don't really like that book because it's just questions, 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 questions. This book at least gives you visual. I'm a very visual person. And so the, the blue book that a lot of people reference, um, I think can be an audio book. If it was an audio book, I think that book would be great, but it, you have to read every question, you know, and, it, and, that, and that's not the format for the uh, check ride. The check ride is a conversation with a person and, and so it's more uh, interaction, you know. Um, so overall, the check ride was really, really not that uh, complicated, not that hard. People make it out to be more than it is. Um, obviously you have to study and you have to prepare for it, but don't overdo it is what I'm trying to say and make sure you prepare and organize yourself. And if you do that, you will do very well. The three by five cards help me, the binder and the books. I think those, those are the things that I recommend. And then obviously talk to other people, talk to other pilots, talk to people that have gone through the same VEPE and get their experience. You know, what my CFI asked me to do was put together some notes on the kind of questions that that he asked me and so what I'm doing is putting this video together so I can share with you my experience and my the way I studied but um, there there will be other students that have flown with your CFI that have taken the exam with the same DEPE talk to them get their experience get their thoughts <laughs> ask them how they prepare and then just just go at it um, all right, guys, I don't want to make the video too long. If you enjoy my videos, like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. Thank you.